welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, uh, checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you if you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I put out three new interviews every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones, all the usual spots, including uh, Spotify and Apple Podcast at uh, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, that's right here, or anywhere you get your podcast from, subscribe to uh, Kyle Meredith with. That's me, Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest, actress Elizabeth Perkins. Uh, now, you know Elizabeth Perkins from, uh, geez, I'm, I'm looking at the lineup here. Of course, Big, About Last Night's, Weeds, The Flintstones, Miracle on 34th Street, uh, she's been doing a ton lately. She's part of the uh, the, the Spider Verse uh, movies that that's been out. Uh, but she's also parts of the second season of Minx. Now she comes on as this character uh, Constance, who is uh, who's going to help them out. She's 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 going to come in because they they always need money for their magazines. And if you've watched the uh, the first seasons, know what the whole thing is based on. Uh, we, we have uh, we have someone who has presented an idea of wanting to start a feminist magazine in the 70s but it sort of gets bundled up in a male pornographic magazine and it's very original and it's got a great cast and elizabeth perkins comes on this and just knocks it out because she is incredible at what she does so we get to talk all about that i want to hear what brought her onto the project what her first impressions of the show was uh we're going to talk about lots of the needle drops in it in fact i i had seen on her social media pages that she had just seen uh, Joni Mitchell with Brandy Carlisle up at the Gorge uh, in uh, in the Northwest. And so I definitely want to ask about that. So we're going to get into all that. And by the way, she's also in the uh, the second season of The After Party. We don't get to talk about that, but I'm going to go ahead and mention it anyway. So let's jump into this. We're going to talk season two of Minx. It's Kyle Meredith with Elizabeth Perkins. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. It's such a pleasure and honor to uh, to meet you on here. And it was so great to see you in this uh, new season of Minx and what 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 is going on. I, I guess the the question mm -hmm. is, what was your impression of the show? Why did you want to why, why did you want to play this character? Oh, I love the show. You know, I saw season one, and I I do you know I was like, oh, L.A. '70s pornographer, feminist. This is interesting. I'd never seen anything like it. And I just fell in love with it from episode one. It was just, oh, I got to see two. Oh, I got to see three. I loved the interplay of the characters. I loved the whole idea of like the San Fernando Valley in the 70s. And, you know, having lived in this city for 40 years, to, to sort of go back and remember what it was like in the 70s. I mean, I was alive the, back then in the old days. You know, to see Laurel Canyon, to see, you know, the Strip, to see, you know, Venice Beach. I mean, it's all, it's just rare to have a show that's going to really explore the Los Angeles environment during those, that really particular era. And so when they said, oh, there's a, a role on Minx, do you know the show? I was like, I'll do it. I, I really didn't even care what the role was. But then when I read Constance, I was like, yes. This is perfect. I'm so excited because she's just way out there. Complete eccentric. Yeah. I had a ball. Yeah. There's there's that sense right from the beginning, like, can we trust her? Can she be trusted? Right. Like, that's that's probably fun to play with, I, I would imagine. Well, especially since she, you know, when we find her, she's sort of languishing at this point in her gigantic villa with her naked boy toys and her you know afghan dogs and her butler and she sort of knows that she's got the upper hand instantaneously because these people are really in a desperate situation and they need money and money is power and she knows that and she's not gonna she's not gonna show her hand right away she's gonna let them all sort of stew in whatever it is they're, whatever they're stewing and she's gonna let them stew for a little longer um, she likes to think she's the smartest person in the room, mm -hmm. but she may have a few challengers. Yeah, well, it, it's 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 fun watching that all unfold. And 
And I was actually thinking about what you were saying a minute ago with, you know, seeing the 70s and you see the 70s, you see California in the 70s, you've got the rock stars roaming all around. I mean, what I read, Linda Ronstadt, mm-hmm. uh, Glenn Fry, uh, Fry, Graham Nash. Yep. You got Crosby, Stills, Nash. Right. And yeah. 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 And I was like, you were Annie just Leibovitz at the- Annie Leibovitz and right. Carl Sagan. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really packed this season. It's great. Yeah. There's reference well, a- to Warren Beatty, but you don't necessarily see him. <laughs> But you were at the Joni concerts with Brandy Carlisle. I was. Oh my God. It, and I, that's I, yeah, that world, right? I mean, please go on. What was that like? Well, you know, I was a child of the 70s. I was born in 1960. So the 70s were my entire high school, middle school um, life. And Joni Mitchell was the definition of this the 70s generation. Um, And I grew up with her and the concert was, there were 30,000 people at the Gorge and she hasn't played live in 20 years. There was people from Japan, there was people from Australia and she sung both sides now as her closing number, acapella, and you could have heard a pin drop and the reverence and the respect that that the audience had for, the way she changed culture and and the soundtrack of so many people's lives that was being played in that gorge was overwhelming for everyone and wendy and lisa were there from Mm -hmm. which was incredible and annie lennox sang Mm -hmm. and um i'm tearing up a little bit um sarah mclaughlin was there and marcus mumford and it was just for a child of the seventies, it was overwhelming in a beautiful, beautiful way. Yeah. I've been listening to the Newport set uh, that's also coming oh, out incredible. and just incredible. Yeah. yeah it's and the incredible. The film is coming out shortly too. They, right. they filmed it. So it's, I think it's coming out the 21st, somewhere around there. Yeah. But just seeing that, you know, those worlds colliding in, in your world, at least I was like, oh, that's gotta be interesting. It's gotta be interesting to sort of play around in the seventies and then to be faced with that icon, you know, right there that so many Absolutely. of us had missed. Absolutely. I've been immersed in the seventies now for most of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'll quickly bring that up on Minx. I mean, it's got a hell of a soundtrack. I keep hearing yeah. T-Rex, almost like T-Rex is the unofficial house band it's of the show. Yeah, it's true. Like, and it makes what, what's sense on your, to me. Right. What's on your soundtrack? What's on your 70s soundtrack for uh, for your, your own personal Minx soundtrack? Oh, uh, well, I for Constance, there's no 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Constance is still drinking to Frank Sinatra and Perry Como, mm-hmm. you know. She she might have a little bit of Peggy Lee in there or some Judy Garland when she's having a bad night, but I don't I I, I don't think she's evolved into a '70s soundtrack yet. I think she's gotcha. still stuck in the late '50s, early '60s. I think she'd like to get there. Um, but I don't think she's there yet. She's definitely yeah. not T Rex yet. 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 Yes. <laughs> um. The one thing I do love about this show is the lens that we sort of do get to also see the 70s because the 70s, we know, I mean, they were problematic when we're talking about uh, people's rights and and, and feminism and there were heroes for sure. But do you feel like this show also gives like, um, what what do you call that? The, uh, you know, the sliding door, you know, what what if it were, what, what if it were a little different? What would it have been like? Right. And what do you mean in terms of what would it have been like? Like this, that like everybody on here seems to have the opportunities that maybe everyone didn't get in the original time, you know? And that's when I look at it, I was like, it's like, this could have been a bit more like what the 70s and like, maybe it would have been like, I don't know how you see it. Like, how do you see the show, I guess, in in that sort of lens? Well, I think um, it's a very, very specific um, and specific to Los Angeles in that you know with the rise of pornography in the valley and in south pasadena i think there was a very very distinctive group of people that were sort of engaging in that and i think bringing in sort of this young writer journalist and them just sort of haphazardly meeting each other it's very 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 unique moment Mm -hmm. but i do think that the outside environment is very typical of what was going on at the time. And so, yes, you have something that, you know, was unique to this show, which I love because it's not just about 
dog and it's not just about Joyce. It's about the like the intersection of these two people that are on vastly different planes. But it I think the backdrop is very relatable and right. very real. Yeah. You know. Like I said, I love the way all of you all are playing with it. And then you know, the, the show being saved, of course, I know is sort of a little parts of the conversation going on here. Yeah. I mean, what was that experience like? Because you you finished the show, you finished the show, not exactly knowing what's going to happen, right? Yeah, it was hard for everybody. You know, it's, it's, thank God for Lionsgate and stars, you know, they, they love the show. And I do think that we're in an era where it's, you know, it's it's about commerce and yet there are still great studios like Stars and and Lionsgate who are like, no, this show is really good. The writing is fantastic. The actors are great. They're telling a great story in a great time period. Um, and there's 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 still pockets of really great stuff going on, you know, and I'm just really grateful that they picked up the show because yeah. it's a worthy show. Not that other shows aren't worthy, but this show in particular has has something to say. Yeah, uh, I've loved this season so far. I'm, I'm hoping Good. we get a full three season, at least arc out of this thing. And and by yeah. the way, uh, also seeing that you know you're popping up in the after party. It's uh, yes, it's Elizabeth Perkins everywhere, and I love it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, congrats on this one. Thank you so much thank for taking so the time much. to talk about it. No, thank you for your questions. I appreciate it a lot. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.